Hi, welcome. We are so glad that you're here with ND Admissions Live to talk about our learning environment. Congratulations to all of you who were just admitted to the university and who are joining us this evening. We're delighted to have you and we hope this session will broaden your understanding in which in about the ways that Notre Dame can have a beautiful academic experience for you and it extends beyond the classroom environment. As our conversation unfolds tonight, we encourage you to submit questions via the chat function. We'll do our very best to answer all of those questions. And we also have our Notre Dame admissions intern, Hannah Reynolds, joining us on the side to make sure that she answers questions as we go. I'm Maria McKenna, and I'm one of your hosts for this evening. Hi, I'm Maggie Hook. I'm Associate Director of Study Abroad with Notre Dame International, and I'm also a proud double domer. Hi, I'm Jeff Tebert. I'm the director of the Flatley Center for Undergraduate Scholarly Engagement at Notre Dame. And as, as, as I said, I'm Maria McKenna. I'm a 97 grad of the university and a professor of the practice in Africana Studies and the Initiative on Education here at the university. I'd like to start by sharing a brief presentation, but we'll dedicate most of our time here this evening to questions and answers. I wanna thank those of you who submitted questions earlier, and I encourage you to continue to submit questions as we go along this evening. One of the things that we think about at Notre Dame quite a bit is the idea of the development of the whole student. We think about this quote by Blessed Basil Moreau that grounds most of the work we do here at the university. We shall always place education side by side with instruction. The mind will not be cultivated at the expense of the heart. We're lucky enough to be at a Catholic institution where we have the freedom to think about the whole person in ways that are unique and challenge your very thoughts about the world that you've lived in and that you will inherit as an adult. As an undergraduate at the University of Notre Dame, you can expect a couple of things here that might look a little bit different than other universities. The first is that we encourage academic exploration through our core curriculum. Our core curriculum is a set of classes that you can find more about if you go to corecurriculum.nd.edu. And it's a, a curriculum that challenges students to have a liberal arts background while also being able to specialize in a major and a major and minor of their choice. We have dedicated academic advisors and advising throughout the time at Notre Dame. We have first year advisors that guide you on your course selections while you are beginning your pathway through Notre Dame, that guide you on thinking about your major choices and the ways that you'll navigate the different colleges across the university. We also have content advisors that are in every department and advisors that specialize in everything from career discernment to scholarly programs that we'll hear about later to um, study abroad. Finally, we have lots of people at the university who are here to create a culture of engagement. We want you to think about how you grow in community with others. Our residential community and our academic life aren't separated, but very much an integrated part of the university of, as a whole. I'm gonna turn it over now to Maggie Hook to talk a little bit about Notre Dame International and study abroad, and we'll be back with questions later. Thanks. Thank you, Maria. Um, my task at hand is to provide a brief overview of the basics, who, what, where, when, why, and how of studying abroad and how that works here at Notre Dame. We sincerely hope that any and all students who want to have an international experience during their undergraduate education here has the opportunity to do so. That's regardless of financial need, background, citizenship, your academic major. Um, so we're really proud of the fact that over 70% of our undergraduate students find a way to study abroad um, during their time here at Notre Dame. We have over 60 different programs in 30 locations around the world. So we really have something that fits and works with every student. Um, most students study abroad for one se semester who go during the academic year, but we do also have full academic year programs. Junior year is the most common time to study abroad, but there are also opportunities to go during the academic year, um, during your sophomore year, or even first semester as a senior. Um, when you study abroad through one of Notre Dame's approved programs, you are earning academic credit. The classes you take um, and the credits you earn show up on your transcript 
as Notre Dame classes and are factored into your GPA, not as transfer credit, but as Notre Dame coursework. Um, the, our portfolio of programs vary greatly in the size, where you might be one or one of a few students on an exchange program, to our London undergraduate program that has almost 200 undergraduate students per semester. We have a presence around the world. We have 11 global gateways and centers. Um, if you were to participate in one of our study abroad programs associated with a global gateway or center, you have that additional on-site support of Notre Dame staff um, helping you, facilitating your residential life, um, including you in different immersion and cultural activities while you're there. Um, we know that study abroad is most impactful when students get involved beyond the classroom. It's not enough just to send you to another country and expect a meaningful experience to occur. So we work tirelessly to create internship opportunities, opportunities for research abroad, service learning, and other forms of community engagement. Um, and for those of you that an academic year program just doesn't work, maybe you're part of an athletic team or really involved in student government or ROTC or something on campus that really just limits your ability to go during the academic year, we have wonderful summer study abroad programs, more than 20 summer study abroad programs led and taught by Notre Dame faculty in places around the world where you're learning about the place that you have traveled to together. And those programs vary in length from three weeks to eight weeks, and you typically earn either three credits or six credits for that experience. And I will also mention that Notre Dame International isn't the only place on campus that allows for international um, education opportunities to occur. Um, many language departments um, offer their own programs during semester breaks or during the summer, as well as engineering has their own summer programs. The Center for Social Concerns has service initiatives all around the globe. Um, the Center for the Study of Language and Cultures also has some great opportunities. So why do we want you to study abroad? Because we really believe it it broadens your education. Um, it's integral to the mission of the university to prepare global citizens and help you develop greater understanding of your place in the world and how you can cultivate your gifts and talents to make an impact in this world. Um, it really expands your academic engagement to learn alongside people in a different country, experience a different way of teaching and learning, um, it helps you develop what we call intercultural competence, these skills that allow you to effectively, appropriately, and authentically communicate across difference, which is something that we all need to work on during our entire lives, no matter what field you go into. Um, our students come back from study abroad speaking about the personal development they experienced, that they increased um, their level of independence and confidence and resilience when they face and encounter and overcome new and different situations. And really your undergraduate time, undergraduate years are a really special time when you're able to do this. When else can you live in another country for a few months at a time or a few weeks during the summer? And so these experiences and skills that you gain through studying abroad are really valued by future employers in all fields and will set you apart. And then lastly, how, how do you go about studying abroad? Well, first of all, begin thinking about it early. Um, if you want an international experience to be part of your Notre Dame education, start doing your research now. What programs are the best fit for your major? What locations are most appealing to you and why? What level of on the ground support do you want? Do you want to go to a program associated with a Notre Dame Global Center, Global Gateway, or you want to be independent, um, have a level of independence, and involve your family members in that conversation too. Some things you can do now to find out more are visit our website and browse the program options. Start listening to our Beyond um, Study Abroad, our official Study Abroad podcast. Those are student to student stories where you can hear directly from students who are studying abroad or who have studied abroad. And when you come to campus, meet with our team, attend our study abroad week events in September, and talk to those upperclassmen, your RA in the dorm, who has gone abroad and, and what their experience was like. Um, and lastly, our annual application deadline is November 1st. So just keep that date and deadline in mind um, as you begin your planning. 
Thanks. I have to say, I've been here about uh, 10 years now working at Notre Dame, and I've been at a few different universities in my time. And uh, the work that Notre Dame International does with study abroad here has consistently impressed me the entire time. The programs that they develop are so well structured, well supported, and well integrated into the Notre Dame curriculum that they end up being really valuable experiences, I think, for all the students who pursue them. And they really mean it when they say they try to make these things available to all students, regardless of need, major, or whatnot. So um, yeah, I just, I, I, I hope, I think it's a real strength of this place. And I hope it's something that you um, look into as you're making your decisions. My son is heading to Brazil this summer as a yeah. first year student. So. It's a it's a pretty it's a pretty remarkable program. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about scholarly engagement let's talk and the work about that it. you do. Let's talk about scholarly engagement. So I direct a center called the Flatley Center for Undergraduate Scholarly Engagement, and um, the number one question I get uh, is, "What is that? What is scholarly engagement? What exactly is it?" that you do. And so over the years, I finally developed what I think is a good is a good answer to, to that question. I think simply put, uh, scholarly engagement is work beyond the classroom that builds on knowledge you've learned in the classroom in order to engage with the world in a way that facilitates further learning and personal and professional growth. So that's what we mean by scholarly engagement. And examples of scholarly engagement include internships, service learning, research, uh, and applications for international and national fellowships like the Rhodes Scholarship, the Fulbright Program, and the National Science Foundation Graduate Re Research Fellowship. These are all examples of what we mean when we talk about scholarly engagement. Now, I also sometimes get asked, why is this worth doing? Why, why do scholarly engagement? Why is it worth kind of putting in the extra time that's involved in pursuing these kinds of, act of activities? And I think there's really three, three reasons. I think the first, um, I kind of think of as the, uh, almost the social, the social impact reason. Um, you can use your education to create change in the world, even at this sort of early stage in your career, even as an undergraduate, and many of you have already been been doing this, and that's that's how you're ending up at Notre Dame potentially. But I think you don't have to wait until graduation to start making an, an impact on the world. And scholarly engagement activities are a key way to be able to do that. So that's that's the social impact reason. The second reason I think is a little bit more uh, practical, and it's that these kinds of activities enable you to develop the kinds of skills that I think are increasingly needed to thrive in a professional world that requires independence, creativity and innovation, critical thinking, flexibility, and adaptability. These are all skills that, that you develop in these kind of real world scholarly engagement activities. You have to learn to think on your feet. You have to learn to adapt. And these are things you're going to need, not only during your education here, but as you move out into the world beyond that. And I think the third reason uh, is, is, is a personal reason. And I think that scholarly engagement can play a major role in your discernment. Um, and by that, I mean, the, the real world experiences that you can have through scholarly engagement activities, I think can really help you think through whether a particular line of work or a particular field is part of your vocation or your calling. It's one thing to study something in a classroom, but then to go out and actually do it, to start doing research, to start shadowing, to do service learning, to do an internship. That's when you really find out if if that work inspires you, if that work moves you. And so I think these scholarly engagement activities can be key to personal discernment um, as well. And that's something we really value here at Notre Dame is as a part of your undergraduate education, not only informing you, not only teaching you knowledge, but also helping you think through what it means to have a meaningful and purposeful life for you. And I think scholarly engagement can be a big part of that. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we support scholarly engagement at Notre Dame. Um, most, I would say, and I'd even probably say all undergraduates, um, I can't, I can't prove that with data. So don't, so don't hold, hold me to it. But I'd say almost all, let's say almost all, uh, almost all undergraduates at Notre Dame pursue scholarly engagement in one form or another, even if it's through a lab class or something, something like, like, like that. And, you know, that's likely true at other great universities. I, I think that that's, that, 
that that's the truth. But I think one thing that makes Notre Dame stand out is that we have a center, and I'm you know I'm a little biased at how at how important this is, of course. But we have a center whose job it is to help you identify and pursue the kinds of activities that are right for you, that are going to advance your trajectory in certain ways, that are going to align with your values and your sense of purpose. We have advisors whose it's literally their job to do this with you, to, to help you think through what kinds of activities you might want to pursue, and then how to make those things a reality. Sometimes it requires funding, and so we will help you think about how, how to secure funding from internal university grants or how to get funded to do an external summer opportunity. And then, ultimately, we might be able to help you think about how one of these national fellowships I've talked about can help you uh, advance your career in meaningful ways. So we'll walk you through the application process for writing a grant. We'll walk you through the application process for preparing um, a Rhodes Scholarship application or a Fulbright application. That is what our center does. And I think that, that the kind of attention that we're able to put, put toward that, having a center that just does that work is something that really makes uh, Notre Dame stand out. So I'm really looking forward to hearing about uh, the kind of questions that you all have. And uh, yeah, I hope, I hope we have a good conversation. I have a great example that, that marries both the Notre Dame International and the, the Center for Scholarly Engagement. I have a, a undergraduate research assistant who was a student in my class. And she and I wrote together. We've published together now. And we were supported by Q's and Notre Dame International just last spring to go to London and study Montessori schools all over the UK for a week. And we couldn't have done that without cues and without NDI helping us to get there. So the sky's the limit. That young woman's a business student and here we are studying Montessori education together. So lots of discernment, lots of pieces coming together. She's going to get a PhD in education next year. That's great. And wouldn't have been able to think about that or do that without the yeah. help of Notre Dame International. So let's move on to questions and think about um, some of the things that our, our listeners have, uh, have brought to us and that we have from the beginning. There's, the first questions are for you, um, Maggie. Do, do all students have the opportunity to study abroad? Is there criteria for participating? And can you go to a program more than once or more than one program? Great question. So yes, there are criteria and eligibility requirements depending on programs. So we partner with host institutions in whatever um, country destination you want to go to. And sometimes they are the ones setting like a minimum GPA requirement or a language requirement. Um, but beyond, and, and some programs have capacity limits too. So those are the kinds of things that we look at when we're um, doing our application cycle. But as long as students can keep an open mind and um, have flexibility in um, some of their location preferences or semester of choice here at Notre Dame, we do have a problem where students don't want to study abroad in fall and miss football. And we have too many students applying in the spring, but I'll tell you right now, um, you will not miss that football season. You'll be back for your senior <laughs> year and you can do game watches while you're studying abroad. So we really can place just about every student who comes in and can have an open mind. There are some programs certainly that work better for some majors. Um, engineering majors um, is one that comes to mind that, that not all host universities are offering um, engineering um, uh, classes that so we have some programs that work best for them. We have some specialty programs, such as our Pueblo Mexico program in the fall semester is really for pre-med, pre-health majors who also have an interest in developing their Spanish language skills. So we, we encourage you to reach out to us. And the last question, can you do more than one program? Summer programs do not count against you in terms of uh, a semester application. So we certainly have students who do both a summer program and a semester application, or a semester program as well. Great, thank you so much. Emma, and am I right that in engineering, for students who wanna study abroad, summer is often the best opportunity. There's programs in Spain, there's programs in London and Ireland. There are quite a few opportunities in the summer for our engineers that have a little bit more of a stringent curriculum. Is that correct? Yeah, so the, the College of Engineering offers a robust um, offering of different 
options for engineering students during the summer months that, that really cater to their needs. But that said, we also do have semester programs that work well for engineers. Um, London can take engineering students. Santiago, Chile, and Alcoy, Spain can take engineering Great. students of certain majors if they have the Spanish language ability, for example. So Great, yeah. thank you. I have some questions for you about cues. And one of them is, do students have to seek out advisors and cues on their own? Or is everybody assigned a cues advisor? So not everyone is assigned a CUES advisor. You sort of have, have to seek us out on your own, but we are available to meet with all students at the university. And so um, you can you could go to our website right right now, uh, cues.nd.edu, that's C-U-S-E.nd.edu. And if you go to um, our About page, you'll see a place there where you can make an appointment with the CUES advisor. And that's typically the way that uh, student, students will do it is they will uh, make an initial uh, initial appointment with someone to talk about their interests and then we sort of we sort of go from there often what ends up happening is um, someone will come in have an initial conversation with us we'll refer that student out to different people on campus maybe faculty they'll talk to or to different units that offer programs that might align with the students interests and the hope is that students will sort of return to us for visits throughout their time um, as they develop their interests further, that maybe they're looking to develop a project, so we can talk them through that. Maybe then they're looking for funding, so we can talk them through that. And then again, maybe that all culminates in something like a Fulbright. Maybe they've studied abroad, they've done research abroad, and they want to return there after graduation on a Fulbright grant to pursue that research more. Um, so we try to kind of our, our hope is really that an initial meeting with us will lead into a relationship throughout the student's time time here. Great. Thanks so much. There are a few questions here that I might actually answer as um, a former academic advisor and a director of a program for first gen students here at Notre Dame. One of them is, are students able to double major? And what are the requirements for freshman year? At, at the university, you can double major, you can major and have a supplementary major or two minors. There are very few combinations that we can't figure out. What we really want to encourage in our students is students to think about the ways in which they are both going deeply into a subject matter that they're interested in and also finding out if there's something that they didn't even know existed before they got here that they want to study all of a sudden. I was just talking with a student today about the fact that they took an elements of computing class and that led to a data science minor, which led to a research project in data science, which led to them going to study in graduate school in Ireland uh, in a program that requires data science. They didn't even know that that was something they wanted to do when they got to the university. Our curriculum is quite flexible in that you don't have to take everything in your first year to meet your core curriculum requirements. Every student in their freshman year takes what's called the Moreau course. Moreau is a one credit course over two semesters that allows us to have a broad introduction to both university ideas and growing into yourself as an adult from a, a variety of perspectives. We think about multiculturalism, we think about community, we think about faith and health and wellness in that course, and we think about academic discernment. Aside from that, your course selection will be, will be determined in consultation with your academic advisor and will ma um, map onto your particular major. So some majors require a pretty stringent set of courses in your first year. Those are largely in the sciences and engineering. Other majors, you have more flexibility and you might take a theology or an English course or explore something in the sciences that you're thinking about. So there is both um, required courses, depending on your major that you've chosen, and a lot of flexibility if you are thinking you're not quite sure and you wanna dabble in different places. One of the questions we had is, can we switch the major we declared on our application? <coughs> yes, yes, and yes. Mm -hmm. I think, Maggie, you've seen lots of applications for study abroad where students started in one place and ended up in another. Can you think of examples of how that might influence where somebody wants 
to study abroad? Sure, and as you're talking, I was also saying I see plenty of students studying abroad who have double majors or a major in a couple different minors. So that's not a prohibiting factor in studying abroad at all either. Um, and we have um, many approved courses that will count to as core university requirements that students can take abroad. We have a master list. So once you start you know, narrowing down your, your programs, you can say, can I take my second theology in this location? Can I take my second philosophy or my ways of knowing in history? Um, so we keep track of that and students can certainly fulfill core requirements as well as major requirements while abroad. Um, yeah, if a student is changing his major, it does require the approval of, of their advisor, their advising dean, um, if they apply to us under one major and then switch to another to make sure it still works with their program to allow them to graduate in four years. But no, flexibility is key. You, you've said the word flexibility and we, we work with students to make it happen. Great, thanks. A question that's come to us is about um, internships and research. There are research internships there are internships, and then there is research that might not be called an internship. Can you talk a little bit about how students might navigate finding a research question or a research project that they're interested in and how cues might help them with that? Yeah, for sure. And th these are this is often the kind of conversation that we have with students when they come in uh, to, to meet with us. And I think um, often really the best way to think about uh, how to develop a research question or research interest is to kind of uh, start with the uh, topics that have sparked your interest in a class um, or maybe in a lecture you've attended on campus or something like that where where you've you you've been exposed to some idea and it's sort of it, it sort of sparks something within you that that makes you interested in that for its own sake, where you want to learn more about that, you want to explore that question in more detail. And then I think the key sort of next step there um, is to do a couple of things. One is I think to start um, exploring maybe some resources attached to that question. It's so easy to to do some searches online, find find some books, find find some articles, and you know we we can help guide you through that if you need it in cues. But I think the other thing is to talk then to um, faculty members here who work in that area or who might know something about how to approach that, that question. And I think that that talking to faculty member piece is really key. Um, one general piece of advice I give to many students with whom I meet is um, don't be afraid to talk to people about the things that you're interested in. And if something sparks your interest in a class, go to that faculty member's office hours and ask them questions about that thing. Um, Notre Dame is a, we have strong graduate programs and strong research, but it's a very undergraduate education focused place. And um, time and time again, I've been impressed by how devoted the faculty here are to undergraduates and how happy they are to talk with undergraduates about their interests and to work with them on projects just like you have many, many times. Um, so there's, there's a real openness to that here. And so I think that's kind of the key step is think about the things that kind of get you excited where you want to you just want to read about these things for fun, the kind of questions that really motivate you. And then find the people here on campus, and this will often be people whose classes you've taken, but find the people here on campus who work in those areas and just start talking to them and sort of talk to anyone who, who will listen really about your interests. And if you do that enough, I think connections will start to form. You'll start to get recommendations of things to read. You might get invited to join a research project. You might learn about different funding opportunities where you could pursue things in more depth over the summer, but it all starts with those kinds of conversations. And a lot of things, I think a lot of the best opportunities happen um, by talking to people and doors opening from from that. Um, and yeah, you know, if, if you have questions about how to do that, um, that's really what CUSE is for. Our hope is that you can come to us and talk about this and we can kind of lay out how do you get started doing research and what and how do you approach a faculty member for the first time? How do you send an email to a faculty member? What's the appropriate way to do that? You don't just say, hey, or hey you, or hey mister, or so, you know, there, there are ways to do it that are sort of respectful. And these are the kinds of things that we, that we try to help with. This dovetails into another question that has come across the chat. And that is, if you're not sure about your major or what you're studying, how do you figure out what to do? And what I will tell you is most people aren't sure about their major or what they're going to do. You are 18 and 19 years old 
and we would expect you to come in having questions about what the rest of your life is going to look like. If I ask anyone on this panel, did you expect to be where you are today doing what you're doing? The answer would likely be no. So some of the opportunities we have to think about that are academic advisors, as we've already talked about, but there's also faculty members that you say, hey, Professor McKenna, can we go to coffee? Can we talk about how you are in Africana studies? And we have a residence life system with rectors and assistant rectors and RAs that you can talk about what you're thinking about and how you're thinking about work. We have different units across campus within the provost office and our academic uh, enterprise that relate to how to think about not just the courses you're taking, but the paths you're going into across um, a summer, across an academic year journey in Jerusalem or in China. And we have to think with you and alongside you, and we know that. So please don't feel like I can only come here if I'm 100% sure I know what I'm going to do. And I'm 100% sure I know it's going to be a, a lucrative career at the end of that path. Enjoy the work you study and learn how to be a critical, beautiful thinker and the job will come and the career will come and the next step will come. I want you also to think through, um, there's lots of questions in the chat about grades. If I get an 89 on a test, is that 89 a real 89 or is it compared to somebody else's 89? Across the university, there are lots of different ways we handle grades and we handle assessment. The most important assessment is going to come from you and discerning how it is that you use your educational time here. So when we think about study abroad, when we think about research opportunities, when we think about friendships and how to cultivate relationships, that's the kind of thing that we want you to be thinking about, not fixated on whether or not you have a 3.1 when you graduate or 3.89 or 4.0. Everyone who's coming to Notre Dame is an incredibly talented in individual and your job while you're with us is to figure out how you're going to use those gifts. There's a question about, um, about study abroad in the chat that I want to come back to and that is could we talk a little bit about financial aid? How do we pay for study abroad? And does your financial aid follow you? Are there extra scholarships and awards for financial aid Is for study abroad? Is, is study abroad available to everyone? Yeah, thank you. So Notre Dame follows a home tuition model. So that means if you study abroad on a semester, an academic year program, your financial aid package in almost all cases will follow you. And what you pay to the university is what you would pay if you were attending on campus than if you're attending off campus on a study abroad program. So that financial aid package, those scholarships, um, that will all follow you when you go to a through a Notre Dame approved program during the, the semester or academic year. Um, summer is a different story. Um, financial aid packages don't apply to summer programs, but there are aid um, available, whether it's through our office, elsewhere on campus, or through external grants and fellowships. We actually liaise and work closely with PUSE for the Gilman Scholarship. Notre Dame has been a top producer of Gilman Scholars, and that is a scholarship that is just for studying abroad. Um, it's for Pell Grant eligible and uh, students um, and recipients. So his advisors um, work with our students drafting their Gilman applications, revising them, um, helping them with the submission timeline. Um, our office, of course, supports them as well. And yeah, we have several recipients of that award every year, which helps um, make study abroad financially possible. That said, students should always start saving ahead of time for all those extras they want to do during the semester because those extra weekend trips or add-ons on the end of the semester, those are things that will come out of your pocket. So get those summer jobs um, or over winter break. <laughs> One thing I like to mention too to students is that we have a domestic study away program in Washington, D.C. that students take up during the academic year and during the summer. That is a program for students who don't want to or aren't able to leave the country for any reason to experience the same kind of opportunities that come with a study abroad experience within the boundaries of the United States. And that's a, that's a great opportunity. I have a question here that uh, I know 
Dr. Tiebert, you have a, a, a lot of experience and answers with in working in undergraduate education, which is, do we have tutoring available for students on campus? What happens if a student might be struggling in a, in a course? Who can help them? Yeah, we do have tutoring and um, it's something that, um, you know, we see here, I think, as part as, as an integral part of an undergraduate education. Like, it's okay to struggle in a class. It's okay to need some additional help. And we want people to know that that's, that's totally fine. It's not a weakness to have to go to tutoring. It's, mm -hmm. it's a positive thing. It will help, it will help you learn. And um, we've actually been doing a lot, even this year, to expand the tutoring resources that are um, available. A new um, STEM tutoring center mm -hmm. has opened up in one of our buildings here. And um, there's been a lot of focus lately, actually, on kind of expanding what we're able to do here in terms of tutoring. There are really good systems set up for um, connecting you with tutors who can help you with the specific classes that um, that you could use a little a little additional help help with. And generally, it's just a matter of kind of talking to your academic advisor, keeping the lines of communication open, um, and they will help you make 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 those connections. And um, we've even, I think, developed a, sort of an electronic system now for mm -hmm. setting people up with tutors where it's it's really developed a lot even in the past year, year or two. Um, so yeah, tutoring, I think, is just it's just part of it's part of learning and uh, we have a really good system set up for helping people with that That's as needed i i love thinking about getting extra help is the water that we swim in yeah. um, as you move into this next stage of your That's educational good. career asking for help and asking for question and asking good questions are two of the most important things yeah. you can do as you go talking to somebody and study abroad early on in your career, figuring out where do you go for um, this or that opportunity. There's a question here about experiential learning and opportunities that students have in neuroscience and behavior, in political science and psychology across the university and particularly rooted in the Center for Social Concerns, there is what we call engaged scholarship. We have community-based learning courses that meet and go out into the, the, the South Bend community, but also the wider uh, American and international community to work with people in engaged questions of research and scholarship that aren't a, a one student specific, but an entire course specific or an entire program specific. Those um, engaged scholarly activities are everywhere across Notre Dame. And there's some of the experiences that really pique the student's interest to, oh, maybe I need to go to Chile. I've been helping with a project about education in Chile. I've been thinking about this. Maybe I wanna to go to Chile. Or I've been thinking about the criminal justice system and criminal justice reform. I'd like to write my senior thesis, but I need some help figuring out how to get to interviewing certain people about the criminal justice system here in Indiana. So lots of opportunities to think about engaged scholarship. The last um, two questions here that I'll pick up and then we're gonna wrap this up for the evening. Um, the first is, uh, what is the faculty student ratio and what's the average class size for first year students? We have one of the lowest class sizes across the United States as a whole in terms of our university. Most classes in your freshman year are going to be fairly small fewer than 20 students, with the exception of some very large introductory courses, the introduction to American studies, the introduction to American political systems, introductory biology. But even in those larger courses, you're going to have discussion sections or problem solving sections or um, breakout sessions that are going to allow that big class to become a smaller community of learners that allows you to figure out how to navigate even some of our largest courses. Our first year students all take a university seminar and those university seminars are taught by tenured faculty members and some of our most esteemed faculty on campus because we want our students to experience teaching faculty and research faculty and clinical faculty and our most world renowned tenure track faculty. You will not be taught entirely by grad students in your first year, but what I will say is our grad students pay attention to pedagogy and pay attention to the ways in which we are teaching students. So you don't need to worry about who that instructor is because every classroom you walk into is going to be pretty, pretty spectacular. Um, course selection process can start as soon as we start seeing the fall catalog come out. That fall catalog will be able to be found through Inside ND. 
and you can go to path it's an app within our Inside ND system. You have access to that as soon as you accept at the university. And you'll be able to see all of the courses available to you as a, as a first year student and navigate those to think about what you might want your schedule to look like. Advisors are available over Zoom and phone during the, during the summer months as you think about your classes. And it's never too early to write a professor to write another student, to reach out to someone that's reached out to you and say, hey, can you connect me to somebody who's studying psychology or studying music? I'd like to talk to them. With that, I will close and say thank you for being here. Thank you to our, our panelists for being here. And we look forward to seeing you in our courses and offices soon.